Uh, David mentioned the beginning of the political season. Check out Tim Pawlenty, the governor of Minnesota, on Good Morning America this morning. If you want to, you can tell us you're going to run for president right now. If you want to take the opportunity. I'm going to George, president of my hockey <laughs> association. <laughs> I knew I was very good pause. Mostly to run for president these days, you got to be famous, have a lot of money or have novelty. I don't have any of that, but uh, I do have some good ideas and some good experiences. Yeah, he almost declared. Almost declared. I, I, I suppose we almost fell for it. No, 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 no wait. So close. No. Didn't Barack Obama did that on Monday? I would have loved that. Yes, yeah. so that would have been the moment. Harry <laughs> Baker Jr. here for our for our post politics segment. And let's start with President Obama. There's one story we haven't gotten into that much this week, and you you covered it uh, a little bit in the post. Healthcare is back as an issue, and we saw this this new effort by Democrats to go out and aggressively sell healthcare. Some eye popping numbers. What is it? Uh, uh, you you may know the number of millions that they're they're looking to spend on this but yes. healthcare is re-emerging and we're seeing we're seeing both sides begin to use it again after we haven't talked about it for a couple of months. It's interesting because if you remember the polling show that both Democrats and Republicans lost popularity, Americans were very tired of the healthcare debate when it ended, but yet for the Republicans think it sort of plays into their message that you spend you spend too much, you focus on the wrong thing. So they want to talk about repeal. They they think that's good for them. And Obama and the Democrats want to sell health care and, and say repeal is crazy and then try to paint the Republicans as being extremists. So both sides see some incentive to talk about this. They're both pushing this issue over and over again the next uh, for the next few months, I think. I mean, they, the, the Democrats knew, it seemed clear that they knew after it passed, they still had a sales job to do. Yes. This is clearly part yes. of that. But ha, are you sensing, as the environment proves to be as volatile as it is, uh, among Democrats, a little concern about selling it too hard and putting it in the foreground because it is not yet uh, popular? What you saw was, there was a good New York Times story earlier in the week that said Democrats The competition. Are, right? The competition. <laughs> <not closer. laughs> but Democrats are not having town halls. A lot of them are. There is some wariness among the actual, like, there aren't a lot of rank-and-file Democrats who want to have huge town halls about Healthcare, but the party more broadly thinks to like sell that they've accomplished things this year that they have to talk about this. This is the thing they spent all this time on. The economy doesn't look like it's going to be unemployment is not going to go down that much before election day. Looks right. like so this is something they need to sell. This is what they've done. This is the only thing they actually got done this year, so they have to do it. Perry, I want to I want to talk California for a moment because we see so many interesting things develop out, out of that race. Carly Fiorina learned a lesson in open mics. Uh, yes. <laughs> obviously, first time candidates, you you learn these things. How do you see that shaping up though? Is this going to be a real opportunity for Republicans, not just there but also in the governor's race? I think. Both both of them are opportunities because one thing, Fiorina and particularly Whitman have all this money to spend, sure. which is a huge factor in it. Um, Californians are, they're more liberal, than they're not as liberal as we think they are. They've had Republican governors constantly, they have one now. Boxer's numbers are not very strong. Fiorina looks like a good candidate, minus what I saw. I mean, I was out with her Monday and Tuesday. She had a good message about the economy that I thought was smart. I think Wednesday showed she may have a little um, work to do in terms of not saying things in front of the mic, uh, <laughs> mic but we'll see. Not only, it's not just the open mic experience, the problem for her, though, it is what she was saying. It was this catty uh, uh, comment about Barbara Boxer's hair. How do I, this should be one of the more interesting races of the year, in part because both these candidates, and I don't want to sound sexist here, but are known for not being particularly nice people, I think. <laughs> in some ways, Fiorina from her time at HP, uh, Boxer's known for saying controversial things when we were about Condi Rice a few years ago. Except I think it's going to be a kind of a bloody race, and I think it'll be interesting to see. I think that was not a good first date for her because of the cattiness of it, and I think that, and these two people also seem not to like each other very much. Boxer oh, and Fiorina yeah, are giving a clear. lot of signs that there's a strong dislike. Should be like, you know, Sununu and Shaheen from a couple years ago. A lot right. of dislike, I think, is what we're going to see by the time this is over. Although what's, what's interesting is, I think, because it's a woman saying that about another woman, it, it kind of it levels things out a little bit in terms of the backlash you'd see against that. I suspect it does, but I still think voters are not going to see right. that well on the first day, because they don't really know much about Fiorina. I mean, it's California. This will be the first thing a lot of people will hear about her, is that she said this thing about Barbara Boxer's hair, you know. I, and it will remain a big spotlight race, not just because of the personalities, but if that is a real competitive race, yeah. uh, that's the kind of race that the Republicans need to win if they think they have a shot at taking back the Senate. Yes, winning, it'll be very symbolically important if they won California. The president was out there last month. I assume he'll be out there again. Right. Like I said, Boxer's numbers are not great. And she's part of this group. I'd say Boxer, maybe Russ Feingold, Patty Murray. These right. senators who, if the Republicans are going to win the majority, like you said, they have to win one of these races we didn't think at the beginning not of the year just, they would win. Not, not just, just symbolic, the, but numeric. When numeric, you get down to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so be able to Exactly. there over the top. Perry Bacon Jr., our post-politics segment. Thanks for being here. Perry Thanks from the Washington Post. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Perry.